little bit about the kind of mid-season. You went through a stretch of about six games where you just couldn't get the ball to go in the basket. What's happening then, and what changed it? How did you snap out of it? Because suddenly you've been shooting about the last nine games, shooting the ball pretty well again. Um, just shooting with confidence. Uh, just, I feel like just putting in the extra rep, putting in the extra shots. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you there. Just, just playing with more confidence. Just playing with confidence and um, putting in the extra work, putting in the extra shots just to repetition, repetition, and shoot the same shots. And I mean, it's just been falling for me lately and uh, just, just shooting with confidence. That's basically it. Obviously, when, this, when, you're, when they're going and you are shooting with confidence, but yeah. when you're having such a rough stretch, how do you get that confidence going again? Uh, just, I mean, just go back to the basics, the same, same shot, same basket. So it's just, for me, I think it's repetition, just um, shooting the same shot and, and how many times I'm, I'm, I'm getting those shots up in practice and, uh, and on my free time. Does the game feel a lot different when all of a sudden the ball's going in? Uh, yeah, it's really, it's, I mean, just this past stretch, this past nine games, I mean, games are feeling a lot more consistent, a lot more smooth, smoothly for me. I feel a lot more at ease and I feel like, uh, I'm a lot more comfortable out there on the court. How important do you think it is for your team that you're able to provide that to, to complement what the other guys give you? Um, I think I think it helps our team well, but at the same time, we have other guys stepping up playing well also. But um, I mean, just like I said, just um, you know, just go out there and play with confidence, and I think I can help my team on on the defensive side and offensive side. Justin, can you remember the time when it was that you decided to? Start taking more shots in practice to kind of get that repetition. Um, I think it was um, right before, right after USC, right after USC UCLA stretch. And look, what does that entail? The more shots, like what, what kind of workload are we talking about? I mean, what, what do you mean? Like how, how much, many more shots? In a lot, probably, probably like fifteen hundred a week. Yeah. Can you come in early or stay later? Or how do yeah, you do uh, Theo's been working with me a lot over these past, over these past, uh, you know, a couple months. Um, so we get in in the mornings and we get in after practice. So anytime, anytime we can, that fits around our schedule. What time in the morning? Uh, probably, probably about nine, okay. nine ten. You say he's been working with you a lot. Is it just a matter of repetitions, getting more exactly, shots up? Exactly, just repetition. Um, I mean, once you shoot the same shot, it almost feels automatic. I mean, you're not thinking about it. You just you're just shooting the same shots you shoot in the workout, so that's that's what's been helping me a lot. How many uh, just how many different positions on the court do you work on shots? Do you just have uh, a range, or do you limit it to? Uh, we look at the other teams' um, defense, and you know the offense we run, and we kind of work on work on shots we'll be getting, you know, from from the offense we'll be running fires, you know, with defense still playing. So we just uh, we we go by game by game. One game it might be catch and shoot. One game, it might be off the dribble type things and pick and rolls and things like that. So we go by what team we're playing. Apparently, at the timeout at the end of the Oregon game, I guess you said you wanted the, the last shot. Yeah. Um, would you have asked for that a month earlier when you were going to that rough stretch? Probably not. What would you have done in the huddle at that point? Uh, I would have, I mean, I, mean, I would have just took it for granted and knew it was going to Allen. And, um, but at that time, I had confidence that, uh, you know, if I got the ball inside, you know, the three-point line with Lloyd on me, I would be able to rise above him. So um, I asked Coach for the ball, and then the ball they were going for me. Robert, can you talk about this week? And um, you got Colorado on Saturday, and that looks like Thursday's one of those potential trap games where if you're not paying attention, you got a Utah team that is not winning very much, but it plays hard. And, makes the game low scoring. What do you guys have to do to make sure that you stay on that one first? I think we just, you know, we got to come into practice and play really hard. And we can't underestimate them, you know. Uh, and, you know, the, a lot of their last, you know, probably seven or eight games, a lot of their games have been, you know, within four or five points within the stretch. That, like, and they're in winning time. Like, they have a chance to win all those games. And then uh, we can't take them as somebody who we're just going to blow up by 30. We had to take them as a like a legitimate threat because they've done it to everyone. They, you know, they nearly beat Arizona at Arizona at the beginning of the Pac-12. They almost beat them again. You know, they they've beaten Colorado. Like, they're they're a capable team and they play hard and they know how to make the game like ugly because they can play defense. So we have to just make sure we don't take them for granted. Do you guys ever go into a game thinking we're going to blow out somebody by 30, or do you think you're past that taking people for granted stuff? Yeah, I think at the beginning of the season there are a few games where we kind of just. You know, walked in and thought we were just going to beat them, and it ended up not looking so pretty. But I think right now, I think we know how important these games are because we don't want to, you know, repeat last year where we had to win two out of three and we couldn't just get it and it cost us a Pac-12 championship. Mike's been saying for 
weeks and weeks that this team has to play really hard to be as good as it can be, and that you don't have, you can't just walk out there. How long do you think it took for, for you guys to figure that out? I think I really uh, I think it was that Oregon State game at home. You know, we uh, we were kind of you know getting beat by quite a bit, and I think we realized that if we play hard on defense and we play as a team, that like it feels good to win, and it feels good to you know come af- like come back from behind, and we realized that we need to play hard in order to get a win in the Pac-12 against anyone. I think that's when it really clicked, and that's when we started winning more. Justin, do you think that lesson has stuck? Uh, hopefully. I mean, as a, as a team, uh, we don't want to go out there expecting, you know, we're just going to walk out there and blow somebody out just with our talent because, you know, that's when teams get shocked. And uh, with all that work they put in before, you know, winning those tough games is, is out the window because you just gave it up on one game. So uh, hopefully, we, uh, hopefully we got the message. You look at the next two weeks and think we can win the championship? Uh, yeah, just coach was just talking about it in the locker room. Um, we just have to stay focused for you know one more week and one day, and uh, and if we win those three games, the the rest is out of our hands. We just have to hope one of the you know teams above us loses. But um, if we take care of our business, you know, hopefully we put ourselves in a great position to win the Pac-12 championship. When you look at how the leagues uh, sort of unfolded this year, everybody beating everybody. Exactly. Uh, you feel like there's a reasonable chance that those other teams may lose again? Um, of course. I mean, uh, looking at the schedule, I think. Uh, I don't know. I think Arizona has to go down to the UC, to the LA schools, and um, uh, Oregon has to go to Colorado and Utah, and that's that's a tough place to play. So, uh, I mean, I mean, people, anybody can lose those games. I mean, it's, it's teams are playing well right now, and it's at the end of the season where people are, are finally finally thinking that you know it's close to that tournament time, and everybody's on the bubble, or some teams are in, some teams are out. So, it's that time when teams are turning it up, trying to trying to get those last two three wins. I'm sure you guys were not thinking that the rest of your schedule is easy, but you got them all at home. Is there a big advantage in that, Robert? I think so. I think that there's going to be a lot of hype in, in Haas. I think Haas is going to be rocking. I think there's going to be a lot of people here. I think the energy is going to be great. And I, I really think that uh, we don't want to repeat last year. I think that after the season last year, we kind of realized that we kind of burned out too late. We peaked too early, but now I think we're peaking at the right time. I think we just need to keep that momentum, and I think we're going to come out and play really hard. Robert, you talked about when it clicked and sort of against Oregon State. When, when a team all of a sudden gets it like that, is that a reflection of something the coach is doing, or do you guys, is it internal, did something change within you guys? It's, I, I think, I really think it was an internal, you know, thing. I think it was just that feeling like, uh, you know, the whole year we were kind of, you know, we had our ups and downs, and it was just, I think it was that, that just that feeling, the crowd was, you know, really into it, and it was an emotional win, even though it was like Oregon State at home, it was an emotional win for us. And I think that, that emotional win really like sparked something to make us want to <laughs> keep having that feeling after a game. How much is last year sort of still in the back of your head, knowing that you, again, like last year, the chance for a championship, and you're playing the same three last teams in Colorado and Stanford, you know, those two losses last year cost you the championship, knowing you can sort of reverse that. Uh, I think it's more of a, it's in, in the back of our head as in we're, we are not going to repeat it. We don't, we're not going to be afraid of these teams and be like, oh great, last year they, you know, ended our chances. We're going to go the opposite way and get some vengeance because there's a, like, you know, Jorge and Harper, they weren't able to have themselves a Pac-12 championship their season year and their uh, senior year. And that's something that we really, I think, are going to avenge. And I think we have that mindset. Justin, as the head of the class, guys, do you have any more questions for him at all? Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Sir, what do you uh, remember about going against Colorado's front line the first time, especially Robertson? And, you know, how difficult are they compared to some of the other uh, You know, Robertson is, uh, he's, he's really long. He, he can rebound. He's probably the best, I want to say, statistically one of the best rebounders in the nation. Uh, he's a he's one of those guys who can take you out on in the he can take you in the post, but he can also you know go out to mid range and drive at you. And uh, Tunks is a really big guy. You know he, he's he's a banger. He likes to hit people. And Scott is he can uh, use both hands in the post. He's he's you know skilled in the post. So they have a they have a good uh, solid you know, front court and <coughs> and uh, yeah it's, they're gonna they're 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 gonna be tough. They they know how to rebound and they know how to play hard. Are they a difficult matchup for you guys in some ways in terms of personnel? Uh, I, I would say at times when Roberson can get his motor going, he can you know he can be a tough guy to handle. Anyone you know anyone in the country can he could be a hard guy to handle. But uh, 
if we play smart defense and limit him to do the things we want him to do, then uh, I, I, I think that it's a good match. I think we can handle that, uh, those, those big men. Um, you said earlier, you mentioned earlier about how the team last year, towards the end, you know, got, got burned out, got tired, physically tired. How's the uh, energy level on the team right now? What's, uh, what, do you, what do you sense from, from this team? Uh, one, you know, I think we, we have a little bit more national attention. I think we're, I think national attention. I think we, we realize that we have to keep it on. Um, you know, last year we kind of, I was kind of the only guy who really came off the bench for significant minutes. You know, Brandon was a guy that some games he'd come in for 15, other games he'd come in for five. But this year, you know, he's coming in for like 20 minutes a game. I'm coming in for 20 minutes a game. And Bach and, you know, Powers are coming in for five minutes a game. So it's like we have a little bit more depth. And, um, I, I think it was just we we peaked kind of last year. I would say last year we peaked around you know the Oregon Oregon game at home. We came back and we ba we barely beat them. I think we peaked then. Uh, I still think we still have more to go. I think we can you know I don't even think we've reached our peak yet. That's that's how uh, confident I feel about this. You think that the improvement that you guys have made has been primarily defensively? Yeah, I think I think what we've learned how to <laughs> make the game ugly on defense when the ball's not going in. And I think that's something we didn't have. Earlier in the season, when the ball wasn't going in, we kind of just threw our hands up and said, "Well, now what are we going to do?" And uh, teams, you know, came in like Washington and Creighton came in, and we we just kind of just threw our hands up and said, "Forget it." But I think now we've realized that if we play hard on defense, the ball's going to go down, and it, and and it has for us when it's. What's the team's confidence level at the end of games now? It seems like early in the year, you guys weren't closing out the close games, the the Vegas game, mm -hmm. you know, that you could have won and you didn't. And now lately you had a series of really close games and you won virtually all of them. What's happening there, you think? I think it's just, you know, confidence. I think it's guys that just, I think they have a sense of urgency and I think that guys that know that they need to take the shots are taking the shots, like Justin and Allen. And I think that they're becoming more comfortable with doing that. And I also think guys that who aren't supposed to be taking the shots are realizing that, you know, they got to do what they got to do. Like we wouldn't want me or you know, David shooting a three or taking like the last second shot. You know, we want the ball in Justin or Allen's hands. I think the whole team has realized that they have a role. And I think that's something that's really gone a little bit. It's an unsung, you know, aspect of how our teams come together. Is Richard, everyone. Richard hasn't taken a three in a while. <laughs> no, no, he hasn't. <laughs> I gave you some scoring punch uh, in Corvallis, whereas he'd been struggling with his shot the last couple of games. What do you think? Was different for him. Um, I think he was being more aggressive getting to the hoop. Um, that's one thing that uh, Tyrone's really good at. He can. He's a really good slasher, and when he gets to the hoop, he can he can finish the ball. And I think when he does that, it actually makes us a better team because you can't. Uh, you can, if you don't help on Tyrone, he gets to the basket. If you don't help on him, he's going to get to the basket. And if you do, Allen's right there or Justin's right there for a shot. And you know, I think Brandon's been shooting the ball with more confidence and. I think it's uh, Tyrone just needs to be more of a slasher and less of a three-point shooter. It seemed like he had an awareness with Allen struggling that somebody had to step up and give you guys some production. Was that a fair assessment? Yeah, uh, I I also think that he's a uh, he's been pretty good about keeping his confidence up even after you know Oregon. I think he only may have had four points, but you know he, I think he came into Oregon State knowing that he needed to score because Oregon State can be a hard place to play at and. Allen sometimes could struggle in that kind of situation. I mean, you mentioned earlier uh, about defense. Is that largely internal, I mean, meaning desire, or is it uh, uh, in, in accordance with the game plan? Is it, is, it, is it coaching, or is it just the desire to, to play harder on defense? I think it's both. I think when it comes down to watching film, you know, earlier in the week, we, we say what we got to do and we stick to it in practice. And, and it's also a sense of urgency in the game. Uh, We've, I think we've gotten better at you know playing help side defense. I think before other guys would kind of hug their man and someone would just go in for a layup. But now I think we've gotten better. You know, especially I think uh, Richard, Dave, and uh, me. I think we've gotten better at helping off the post and realizing that we can't just give up like easy looks to guards and kind of fake and fade so that we can try to force turnovers. You guys gave up a healthy number of offensive rebounds against Oregon State. Would you say that's a product of guys leaking out to get in transition? Or? Yeah, I would, I'd say sometimes guards, uh, guards on a team sometimes leak out, and other times that they're some of the most aggressive guards in the conference when it comes to rebounding. But I think that was just 
Burton was a really big guy. He's you know he's probably 300 pounds. He outweighs me probably 30 pounds. Uh, Moreland and Collier are both freak athletes, really long arms, and I think it was just that mixed in with the fact that guys were leaking out. So we were giving up quite a few offensive rebounds in that game.